Hello and welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills and today's segment of Build Your Difference. My name is Pierre Walters and I'm one of the producers at Brand Desk and I am excited because I'm joined today by Brittany Walters, who's one of the design directors and producers at uh, Brand Desk. Yeah. And we are uh, going to be discussing today questions mm -hmm. from entrepreneurs in our community and around the country yeah. about how they can effectively build their difference in the marketplace. Brittany? Sure thing. So uh, our first question, uh, I don't have a lot of money to spend on a new website. What's your recommendation for getting my website started? Well, okay. How to get your website started when you don't have a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> we, we encounter that a lot. Um, I, I would say, you know, the first thing I would really recommend is that you think about what is really the most important thing that your intended audience, your mm. customer, wants to, wants to know about you. And think of your website almost like a billboard yeah. for that. What, do you, what, do you, what would you say? A billboard, yeah, or like a, a mini brochure. Yeah. Yeah, something that, that doesn't really overwhelm folks, but really gets to the key points about what you're trying to offer them and how you can help them. Yeah, yeah, and and you know what? Don't think don't think too hard about it. Really, your website is like the modern day. Uh, what what do they call those things? They used to call. What do they have? The oh. business cards. <laughs> business cards. People mm, still use those. Yeah, in 2021? those are getting kind of ancient. So think of your website today as kind of like a modern day business card, and so you want it to have the essentials: your contact information. Mm -hmm. You know what what your primary services are. Uh, definitely some kind of iconography or identity, so that we know that we're at the right place. Yeah, but. You know, if you don't have a lot of money, it doesn't have to be an expensive proposition. You, you know, you, as long as you've got the essential information on there, I think you'll be just fine with launching. Think about it this way. A website is something that's built to grow, right? That's true. Right? So it doesn't have to have everything on day one. As long as people know that it's you, these are the services you offer, these are your prices, and this is how they can get in contact with you, mm -hmm. then guess what? I think, you're, I think you're heading in the right direction. Yeah, totally. That was a great question. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Okay, let's, uh, let's take another question. This is a good one. I'm starting a coaching business. What is the best way for me to be taken seriously in my community and start earning clients? Well, that's, a, that's also a good that's question. A tough okay, one, yeah. so we're getting some good questions. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it can be so hard when you're just starting out to really figure out how to build up clientele mm -hmm. and just to let people know you're here and you're ready to help them. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and being taken seriously is, is kind of a subjective thing because it really That's depends true. on your community, who yeah. your audience is. Um, certainly, you know, if you're in the medical field or mm -hmm. something, being taken seriously in that field is a, is a heck of a lot different than being taken seriously maybe as an artist. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's yeah. a giant sort of subjective difference there. I mean, That's one, true. there's probably a lot of qualifications you need to get, a lot of certifications. Whereas maybe as an artist or, or maybe as a, uh, maybe a service provider, mm. it's more about your reputation and your ability to get the job done yeah. um, and do so you know, based off of what your peers are saying. Yeah. Um, but you know what I have found to be almost a foolproof uh, strategy for, for sort of gaining expertise is, you know, when you're getting into a new market or launching a new business, yeah. write a book. Oh. Really? Write a book. No, no, no problem. Just write a book. It's fine. No, no big deal. <laughs> write a book. It, if you have a book, it, it's, it's kind of like a calling card uh, for you. And, and it, I, I say if you write a book, it's like a calling card for speaking engagements, okay? Mm. If, you're, if, if you can get some speaking engagements, get up in front of a, a, a group of people who are interested in what you have to say, if you can do that, chances are that's because they respect you. They, yeah. they think what you have to say is of value to what it is they're trying to achieve or mm -hmm. accomplish with their business. Yeah. And guess what? The best way to get that invitation is to have a book. You know, it's another, another yeah. good thing about a book, I'm going to throw this out there. Another sure. good thing about a book is it's a very low cost, low you know, risk way wow. to sort of test out whether someone has the expertise that you're looking for, wouldn't you say? Yeah, you know, I think I would love for you to really dive deeper into that for those who are watching. Like, you know, they probably heard, write a book. Oh, my goodness, where do I start? Do I have to get a publisher? That's true. What's going on with that? That's true, yeah. You know, it can be a daunting process. Yeah, a daunting but I guess it's a little, a, little, a little easier these days, right, with technology? Well, it is. It is. And I would say, you know, you don't have to write the next Lord of the Rings <laughs> you know, trilogy. Sure. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you don't even have to do, 
Harry Potter, and I, don't, I wonder which is, you know, which is that. Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings. I don't know. But look, that. what you got to do is just just think, you know, 500 to 1,000 words. Think about like an e-book. Mm, okay? An e-book, okay. Something real simple, something digestible, something that you'd be comfortable giving away for free. Yeah. Just giving away for free. And if you can, if you can get your sort of your thoughts and your, your sort of your maybe your philosophy, your business philosophy, or your, your modus operandi, whatever it is that kind of yeah. is your unique uh, uh, way of offering your service. If you can get that distilled into, into 500, 1,000 words, that's a pretty mm-hmm. good, that's a pretty good uh, e-book that you could offer for free for people just, just for visiting your website and signing up for your oh, newsletter. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it gives you credibility, and, it, and people see you as an expert, so I think that's a... That's a pretty good idea. Yeah, yeah. nice. And I, that, and I guess a, a step a step kind of maybe in the half between nothing and writing a book could be to start blogging maybe. Just kind of yes. getting your thoughts somewhere. Yeah, right? I'm so glad you said that. I'm so glad you said blogging <laughs> because, you know, it can be very daunting to think about sitting down and writing a book. Yeah. But it, it could be, it's, it's a lot more manageable if you think about it in small little steps. Yeah. And if you if you look at your blog on your website as just the opportunity to slowly but surely p- write a book, mm. each blog entry could be, you know, a chapter or a new sort of topic. Yeah. And and if you can if you can discipline yourself or 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 get that uh, get that uh, strategy in place where you are going to contribute to the blog on your website at least once a week or once every two weeks, yeah. you might find that in a month or even two months you have enough material to make an ebook that mm-hmm. you can give away to uh, to people who come to your website and, and want to sign up for your newsletter. Yeah, I mean low risk, low cost, doesn't cost you anything, yeah. doesn't cost them anything. And you get the, the benefit of now being seen as an expert and taken seriously in your, uh, in your field and in your community. That was great, Pierre. You gave yeah. some really great advice for that. Yeah, thank you. Well, let's go ahead and take another question. I've got a really good one here. This one is, oh, this is, okay. My business has experienced a boom in the last several months, but I can't keep up with all the work that's required in order to operate. What wow. should I do? Wow. <laughs> Brittany, what, do you, what, yeah. what, what would you say to this person whose business has exploded in a good way in the last several months? Wow, that's, that's first off, congratulations. It's one of those problems that's a good one to have maybe, but I definitely understand the urgency in trying to solve it. Um, it sounds like maybe right away you need to think about how you can expand. Um, maybe you need to bring on an assistant. Um, maybe you need to bring in an extra designer. Uh, maybe you need to bring in an extra producer, you know, depending on what type of business you have, it might be time to start looking at bringing in some help so that you can uh, multiply yourself and delegate some things Mm -hmm. uh, in order to get those things done and to also still be able to take in uh, more requests for more more work. Yeah, I I just want to absolutely underscore what you're saying. This is the time to think about expansion. Mm -hmm. This is the time to think about, I need help. Yeah. Who can help me? Uh, we recently just launched a book called The Power of Support. We did. And, and I want you to think about that, the power of support. There's actually power in asking for help and asking for support as you're building your business. And, uh, and I mean, there's a lot of tools out there. There's, you just go on Google, search for virtual assistance. There's mm-hmm. a lot of ways that you can get that support. It doesn't have to be expensive. And it can be on your terms, That's how right. you want it to be for your business. So, you know, there's no right way or wrong way to do this. It's about what works for your business. Just think now that it's time to bring in more people and it's not, it's not okay to try to do everything yourself. Yeah, you know, I, I can understand as, as an entrepreneur myself, the, you, know, you get used to doing your own thing and yeah. handling things in your way and making sure everything mm-hmm. is right. And it can be really anxiety producing to think about, well, is someone else going to do it the way I want it done? Are they going to do it, you know, just perfect? And um, I would just say right away, as soon as possible, except that they won't. Just know that they're not you. And it's going to take time to get them to the place where you really want them to execute in the way that you want. But you have to start somewhere. It can't always be you if you want to continue to grow. So just kind of eat that understanding. Yes, this is going to be a difficult transition, but it's going to be worth it, I think. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's powerful. Very well said. We we have another question, which I think kind of goes right it right follows right along with what we were just talking about. This sure, question. Yeah. 
I've just launched my website and I've been adding new blog entries every week consistently for about two months. But nobody's coming to my website. Mm. What should I do? So, wow. wait a second. Here we have someone who is, who is actually consistently yeah. writing blogs on their website. And they've been doing it for weeks. Yeah. For two months. Mm -hmm. But they're having problems getting people to actually come to their site and, I guess, see those blog articles. Yeah. That's kind of tricky. That is tricky. Uh, there's a solution, though. Yeah? What's on your mind? What are you thinking? Email marketing. <laughs> course. Email marketing. <laughs> Just because you post something to your website and click the publish button does not mean anyone knows yeah. that that just happened. But Pierre, what, what email marketing, who, who do I email? I don't have any emails. <laughs> okay, so here's what I would suggest. I, yeah. I would suggest that on your website you add a, like a subscribe form. Some, uh, some kind of function that allows people to, when they come to your website, to subscribe to a mailing list or, an, or a newsletter. Yeah. And then I would suggest that you, uh, if, if your blog on your website produces a, what's called an RSS feed, yeah. that's a, that's a, it's, a, it's a feed that sort of simplifies your blog content and it allows other uh, uh, mechanisms or functions, I don't mm. know what the right term would be, sure, but allows sure. other... Uh, Systems, systems on the yes. internet yeah. to tap into that feed to yeah. know when it's been updated. So, oh, for okay. example, if, if if your blog does produce that RSS feed, you can you can actually pull that RSS feed into your email marketing system, uh -huh. so that uh, at, at the end of the month or at the at the end of maybe a week or two weeks, the uh, email marketing system can check that RSS feed to see if you've published anything new to your site. And if it does find that you've published something new, then it can take that new content, turn it into a beautiful email, and distribute that email to your subscribers, the people wow, who have okay. come to your site and subscribed to your newsletter to begin with. Yeah. So that way, as people are coming to your site, as they're joining your, uh, your uh, mailing list, uh, your newsletter mailing list, they are going to get notified every time you publish something new to your, to your website. Okay. So now they know. Yeah. So now that they know, they're going to come and read because they want to see what you have to say, right? Yeah. Right? So, yeah. so think about that. Think about an email marketing system yeah. um, and how you can incorporate that into your website. And with that said, we're going to take a quick break. That was a great question. We're going to take a quick break. But I want you to stay with us for more great questions on how you can build your difference. Minds can achieve anything. We make sure they get to college. Federal student aid provides more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds to make college possible for anyone with a mind to get there. Because if given the chance, minds will do great things. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. Welcome back to Skills to Pay the Bills and this segment of Build Your Difference. Today, we're discussing entrepreneurship and branding in today's marketplace. And I'm joined with Brittany Walters, who's received some interesting questions from viewers just like you. Brittany? Yeah, so uh, the next question that we've received is, I've always wanted to write a book, but I haven't been able to find a publisher who would take me on and I don't know where to start. Mm. What's your advice for someone like me? Ooh, yeah, that's a, that's a challenging one. Yeah. The, the publishing market is really changing. Yeah. And pretty dramatically. Like everything else, thanks to the internet. Yeah, thanks to the internet. <laughs> Thank you, Amazon. Okay. <laughs> everything is Amazon. just <laughs> completely changing. <laughs> and, and we've kind of, you know, we've had to, we have to kind of learn how to adapt. It used to be that when you wanted to publish a book, um, and you wanted to sort of get the support of a publisher that you needed to write a proposal mm -hmm. and, and sort of shop that proposal around to different yeah. publishers and hope that maybe one or two of them would, would bite and then one, one would finance you or, or fund you yeah. as you write your book. But today, you know, that's, that's, that's still an option, but it's not really the most viable option. Mm -hmm. And so what I would say uh, to, to this person is to, is to look into self-publishing. Yeah. Look into self-publishing and don't be afraid. There's, there's plenty of, uh, of services that can help you to make sure that what you are self-publishing is 
um, is uh, something that meets your own quality standards and something that you think your audience and your customers could really mm -hmm. benefit from. But even if you don't want to spend any extra money yeah. on, uh, self -pub uh, uh, on services that will help you self-publish, you can self-publish on your own. Wow. You know how you know how easy you can you can self publish directly on your own blog or on your own website, okay? Wow. Or they have all these uh, different websites that that sort of help you to put an actual book together, mm. and you just you just upload your manuscript, put put the cover together on their website, whatever their tools are, mm -hmm. and then bam, you've got a, you've got a physical book. No kidding. Yeah. So it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. I mean, look, if you're going to do it on your own, then you do have to you know, recognize that there are going to be some challenges and, and those sure. challenges might be like editing. Yeah. You know, especially if you're not a, like I can't edit my own work. Yeah. Yeah. So I definitely need to have an editor cross check mm -hmm. what I've, what mm -hmm. I've written. So editing Fresh is pair a, of eyes. yeah, I mean, that's a big, that's a big thing. Uh, a design, you're, you know, you're a design director. How would, yeah. how would you recommend someone handle that in terms of their cover? Mm -hmm. You know, if they're trying to do it on a, like a shoestring budget. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, like you said, like with, thanks to the internet, there are so many services or places you can go to get help, uh, if not with the whole thing, mm -hmm. with parts of it maybe. Um, and there's definitely great places to go to find those resources to find freelance designers, freelance yeah. artists um, that will, you know, do what you need done at a variety of, of rates. Mm -hmm. you, know, you find what works for you. You set that budget, and you find a good artist um, where you like their work um, that. Is, is doing that work, you know, within that within that pricing, and you're good to go. Okay, but Brittany, you've spoken like a true designer. <laughs> have I? A true design should director. I, should I dumb it down a little more? <laughs> what What if I have zero dollars? Zero dollars. I don't have any money for a designer. I yeah. don't have any money for anybody. Yeah. What is your recommendation to someone who wants to self-publish mm. and 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 they just got to do the whole thing themselves? Whole thing themselves. How? What would you suggest they do so they still have something professional looking as their like yeah. as their cover design? Well, to keep it honest, um, one thing you could do is maybe start looking out within your network of friends or family to see if anyone will help you with that design part if you're not a designer yourself. Um, and if you think maybe you want to take it on yourself, that's okay too. There are programs on the internet that are free <laughs> that will yeah. let you even yeah. design things. So <laughs> there's, there's very little things sort of in your way actually yeah. other than just... Um, Maybe knowing where to start, or having having that that spark to start. Yeah. Really, everything everything you need is there. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I was I was wondering if you were gonna say this. I was, you yeah. you gave some very good insight into how to sort of pro, procure talent. Mm -hmm. But what I would suggest, if you're sort of stuck between a you know a rock and a hard place, yeah. budget wise, and you really just want to get this done, just simplify it. There's nothing wrong with putting some text. On a on a cover, mm -hmm. and that being your cover, it doesn't have you don't have to it doesn't need to be this thing, yeah. okay? It can just be the title of the book, mm -hmm. who wrote the book, mm -hmm. and that's the cover. Things keep come it in time. Keep, yeah, you can keep it simple. That's really all I'm saying is you can keep it simple. Yeah, it doesn't have to be complicated. You know, uh, you, you, no one ever got rich off their first book, <laughs> okay? If you want to make it as an author, it comes with book two book three, mm -hmm. maybe even book 10, 11, 12. Like, it it's comes true. as you are producing more and more content and building that library That's true. of content. You know, don't yeah. put all this pressure on your first book, you know, That's especially right. if you're working with a shoestring budget. Just get it out there. Yeah. Just get it out there. That's the most important thing. No, no, no need for, what's that, what's that term? Is it paralysis? And that, no, not, that, not uh, paralysis analysis. Something about perfection, I think, being a yeah, perfectionist. Per, right, perfection is the enemy yeah. of, of something or another. Of progress. Of progress, perfect, perfection is the enemy of progress. That's right. Oh, that was good. <laughs> okay, question number six. <laughs> I've been in business for over 30 years in the financial sector. I've provided financial consulting and more for clients successfully, however, mm. With the rise of all these new apps and website services, I'm finding it more and more difficult to keep up and earn new clients. Wow. What should I do to reinvigorate my brand and attract new customers? Wow. Whoa. Yeah, yeah this, this, That's heavy. this business owner is really getting into the nitty gritty of some of the stuff mm. we've kind of been skimming the service of, which yeah. is technology apps, websites, mm -hmm. really having all these things mm -hmm. um, 
and making them really accessible for people. Yeah. And so people who would normally like provide those services or have made a business at providing those services are now running into this situation. Yeah. Um, well, and I, I mean, I just want to underscore one of the things that this person is saying. Uh, I just, I just got used to Facebook. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I should say this on air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't you worry. I'm sure some people bring how long, sigh of relief when they How say long that. have we been with Facebook? I think Facebook was 2000 and I don't know, four to 2003 or something. But it's been a while and I'm just now, it's like, I feel like every time I wrap my head around Facebook, it, it, it transforms into a new, yeah. th a completely new Not thing. Not to mention the newer things that are happening like the TikTok. And yeah, and that's where, that's where I'm going with yeah. this because then now there's a ticking talking. I don't know what this <laughs> stuff is. And then there's a, there's another one which is a clubbing, like a clubbing, a clubhouse. Club, clubhouse. There's a, there's a clubhouse. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe this? So there's a cl it's called Clubhouse. Yeah. I'm like, what is this? What's next? So here's my suggestion. You're yeah. not you're never gonna keep up with this stuff. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Yeah. It, it, don't worry about that. Worry about something simple. Keep it simple. Just put a good website out. Okay. A good website that's easy to understand, easy mm -hmm. to read. Not a lot of text. Big letters. <laughs> big, <laughs> big letters. <laughs> big okay, maybe letters. not big letters, but <laughs> just like the simpler the better. Yeah. Straight to the point, no, um, what's the right word to use like if I want to say? Fluff, thank you, yeah. that's what I wanted to and say. And I think what's important is when, when you're saying straight to the point, I think it's, it's, it's really, it's in that. It's straight to the point of what's unique about what you're offering and why it can be really helpful. Um, I think even though there are so many services and apps and things like that that make things easier for people to do, easier, um, I think at the end of the day, people still want service. They right. still want quality. They still want some kind of assurance that they're working with experts. Um, and I think if you can find a way, especially since you have this past history of being successful, so that's great. It's not like you just came out of the blue. You know, you have a history of doing this well for a lot of people. Um, I think it's just a matter of kind of finding a way to leverage that and, and express it in a very simple, straightforward way. This is what I've done. I'm good at this. Right. I can help you you know, face to face, right? maybe not so much with what's happening right now in the world, but you know. Um. Well, well, I mean, you can do face to face. Yeah. I mean, now they've got the Zooming. That's true. They've got the Googling meeting, <laughs> the Google Meet. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Google Meet, Skype, Zoom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Microsoft has Teams. Yeah. There's a lot of ways you can do video conferencing. I mean, but the point is, the point is, like, what, you know, what we're saying is keeping it simple. Mm -hmm. Keeping it simple. And I'm, I'm joking around a lot yeah. about this because what I what I don't want you to feel like is that you need to keep up with all of these new things because if you place that kind of pressure on yourself, it is a losing battle. Yeah. It is a losing battle because there are so many. You, you, can't, you can't make that your obstacle. You kind of have to pick a different battle to fight. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that you can win it. Um, and keeping up with all the apps and all the new services, that's not, don't fight that battle. Don't, yeah. It's a generational battle. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an audience, you know, they all have their own audiences, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak, okay? What you can do is focus on what you know your audience is looking for. If you can get real specific with yeah. who your audience actually is and what really matters to them, what are their pain points, mm -hmm. then you can speak directly to them. And if you put together a website that's very simple, identifies the pain points, that's right. and, then, uh, and then shows how you can resolve those pain points very simply, at a, at, a, at a reasonable price, mm -hmm. okay, then I think you're, you're going to find that you're, the people are going to come. Yeah. And as you attract an audience, as you, as you, you know, start small and build, okay, especially with your experience, you're going to find that you, you will have the resources to then reinvest, you know, Google ads, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, you can advertise on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can start to spend a little bit of money on some of these advertising strategies to better expand your network. But, but right. the important thing is don't allow yourself to get overwhelmed by keeping up with the new th flavor yeah. that's coming out yeah. every, because I, I, I think it's every year there's a yeah. new app. Yeah. A new, like, it Some app. of them stick around and rise up, or they kind of fall away. Or, well, they, the big ones. there's a new app, and yeah. then whichever app becomes, like, rises to the surface, Facebook buys it. <laughs> yeah. So then it's all Facebook. Yeah. 
And as far as maybe trying to uh, kind of go with the flow as opposed to fight it, right? So yes, there's these new apps, these new websites. Maybe they can actually help you out. Um, you know, pick one or two, but maybe just one. Let's say you pick Instagram and get really good at it and understand how it works and see how it's working for you. Don't try to be the expert of Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all at the same time. Find a platform that you can realistically really sit and learn for yourself before you expand your business to the other platforms. And then it'll slowly start to come together. Right. Well, we've, we've got time for one more question. And I want to just uh, throw yeah. this one to you. It's a, it's a hefty question, but I think maybe if you can, you can probably answer it pretty quickly. OK, I'll Here try my is. best. I'm launching a new graphic design business after just graduating from college. I'm wow. excited to get out there and begin providing design services, but I honestly don't know where to start. Mm. A lot of people are using services like Fiverr to spend as little as $5 on design services, and I know that I have to charge way more in mm -hmm. order for me to make this a viable business. How do I compete against these online platforms? Brittany, can you mm -hmm. give them an answer in 10 seconds? Sure. Um, I think it's very important to really get down to the nitty gritty of what you can offer and be able to express that, what you can offer, how you can, how you can solve their problems, what you can bring to the table, um, how much it will cost them potentially, um, and just really present yourself as someone who's confident about and passionate about helping people uh, solve their problems through design. I think that will at least get a conversation started for you. <laughs> and really, it all is just about a conversation. So listen, we're excited about the surge in entrepreneurship happening across the country right here in our local community. And if you're just now tuning in, we want you to know that you can build your difference right there where you are. Don't, don't hesitate. Get started now. And thank you so much for joining us. And remember, in the words of Octavia Butler, it's amazing what we can do if we simply refuse to give up.